One of the most exciting features of Azure repos is Azure pull requests. Now, pull request isn't a native Git feature. Instead, it's a social experience that has been developed to allow for code review process for developers to enable more collaboration. Now, there are, there are other Git hosting platforms, such as Bitbuckets, GitHub, GitLab, that offer the pull request workflow. But in my view, Azure DevOps offers the most immersive and one of the best in the class pull request workflow. And the reason for that is that the other parts of the products contributing to Azure repos make traceability and automation within the Azure pull request workflow uh, best in its class. In the last few videos, we've uh, heavily focused on working in a local Git repo. This time around, we're going to push the local Git repo up in the server, start a new piece of work, finish that piece of work, raise a pull request to trigger a code review process, collaborate in the code review, merge the changes, and then see how uh, Azure repos um, offers the pull request uh, workflow. So we have this Git repository that we've been working on locally. Let's check the status of that Git repository first. Now, let's flip over to Azure DevOps repos and look at uh, the repo that is there but doesn't have anything in it yet. So we have parts unlimited. It's an empty repo. It doesn't have any code. And you can see that there's some help uh, hints from the documentation telling us that if we wanted to add this repo as the remote origin for an existing local Git repo, then we could simply use these two commands. Let's use these two commands, copy them across. And as we run these commands, the local Git repository is shipped up on the server. As I run this command git remote minus v, I can see that the local git repository is now associated to the remote and shows me the full URL of that remote repository. Coming back, if I refresh the page here, you can see both of the local branches have been merged up to this, uh, have been pushed up to the server. Okay, so next up, what we're going to do is we're going to secure the master branch before we start making any code changes. We can do that with the concepts of policies. In order to get into the policies view, let's click on master and from the context menu, let's select branch policies. Now branch policies gives us a wide array of options. We have the option of protecting this branch by specifying a required minimum number of reviewers for any code changes that are requested to come into this branch. We have the option of specifying that any changes coming into this branch should also have a work item linked to them. I think this is a good uh, policy to have because this allows for better traceability in your code base as you can then make out which code changes were created on the back of which uh, requirements and tasks. Well, there's no point having a code review process if the code review comments aren't fixed. And therefore, this policy allows you to enforce a resolution on the comments that are left. Now, this is the interesting bit here at the bottom where the integration between Azure repos and Azure pipelines really comes into play. You as a developer can create a lot of Azure pipelines that do point jobs um, for you. For example, you may want to run a code analysis. You may want to uh, builds and test the, the code. You may want to uh, deploy the code as part of your test. And all of these jobs can actually be hooked up into the pull request workflow. So when the person triggering the pull request workflow um, starts the pull request, all of these jobs are auto-triggered, which means you as the reviewer coming into the pull request workflow don't need to do these checks manually yourself. Instead, the system does these automatically for you. Now, in this specific case, I'm going to link a packet scan job that I've created, which basically takes the code, scans through it to check if there are any malicious packages in there. Now with that, I will also add a few set of default reviewers into this pull request workflow. Great. With that out of the way, let's uh, get into the context of some work. In the task board, there's some work that needs to be done to add a GDPR uh, compliance banner into our website. Let's move that work into in progress 
and creates a new branch right from within that task work item. With that branch created, let's um, pull down the changes locally and start working on uh, the changes. As you can see, uh, by running git pull, I was able to pull down the latest changes from the server, and then I've checked out the remote branch that I've created on the server. Let's open up the solution in, in the context of uh, the branch. What I'm going to do is, in the layout uh, HTML, I will include a banner for GDPR. With that, my changes are done. Let's go back into the git command line. I can see only one file's been modified, so let's stage, stage these changes. I've committed these changes locally. Let's push these changes up into the server. And as we can see that these changes have been pushed up to the server, let's go back into the project view. And if I refresh the page here, you can see that Azure DevOps right away detects that a change has been made into the feature branch, which is not yet merged into the master branch. And it's giving me the option to create a pull request. So let's trigger that workflow. Now, the intelligence here is that it's able to scan the last set of changes that have been done in the branch and pre-populate uh, the pull request form for you. And there are various templates that are available. You could modify the default behavior by creating a custom template for yourself. In this case, we're just going to go with the defaults. The pull request form also supports markdown and, and rich text. So if you wanted to add, add uh, documents, attachments, GIFs, emojis, all of that social experience is supported within this workflow. Now, as I create the um, pull request, it would have referred to the branch policies and triggered alerts for certain default reviewers, which you can see now have been listed at the bottom. Some of the required policies where work items needed to be linked are already accepted because I'd created the branch using a work item. Um, a, a build has been triggered, and this build job will run in the background and do the packet scan. And meanwhile, uh, I can sit back and let the reviewers uh, take the front seat and do a code review. So in the other browser window, I've logged in as Visual Studio Developer. And you, you can see that Visual Studio Developer has received an email indicating that I've requested for a code review using a pull request. You know, In the summary email, they can right away see commits, files, changes and can click on this to come in right into the context of the pull request. So here we are in pull request number 17. Um, as a reviewer, the individual can come in, look at the file files that have been changed, and right away as the reviewer can come in and spot that this doesn't seem right. You know, why are we still referring to this page as HTTP while we're serving up that tra traffic securely? So they can leave a comment here for me. As they can continue to navigate through the changes and leave comments in line at the file level as well. We 
with the reviewers having done their review, they can come in and look at any other things that need to be uh, paid attention to. Uh, if they're generally happy, they could approve the changes. They could also mark it as approved with suggestions. But in this case, let's play it out uh, with uh, the other individual coming in, assessing the code review comments and working their way from there. So I'm going to switch back into the context of the, the developer who had raised the pull request. So as we can see here, there's a comment uh, that indicates that the traffic to that URL should be HTTPS instead of HTTP. Um, we could either go back into Visual Studio Code to make that change, or we can leverage the editor that's available within Azure repos. In order to do this, let's select the files view from within Azure repos. Go into the context of the layout page, click Edit, make the change here, do the compare, and commit the changes. Now, the beauty, again, here is that rather than having to recreate a new pull request, the pull request is aware of the context of the change to the source branch and therefore is able to include the new changes within the same pull request. So if I go back into the existing pull request, you see it flags that there have been new updates made uh, to the pull request. And this notification is not only available to me as the requester, but is also available to the individual who was doing the code review on my pull request. Now, for the reviewer, if they go back in the context of commits, you know, they can see the history of evolution of the code changes that I'm making. Now, I, I want to drill in on a point here. You know, code review is not an after process. Code review is an in process for learning. You know, you've got a team of developers. Some developers are far more technically mature than the others. And pull requests shouldn't be an exercise to beat up the junior developers on things they're doing wrong. Instead, it should be seen as a collaboration activity where you, where you can open up a code review pull request for brainstorming ideas, for uh, seeking guidance on how certain implementation can be done. So going back here, um, you know, I'm generally happy with the changes that have been done. And on that basis, these can be uh, resolved. With the changes resolved, I'm happy to approve. And as you can see, that my uh, review has been completed here. And on that basis, I can set to autocomplete. What that means is when the other approvers have approved the change, then from my side, I've given a go ahead for the merge to complete on its own. And again, that notification workflow is available to the requester as well. So with that, we quickly uh, went through the pull request workflow within Azure repos. As you saw, the integration of an inbuilt editor, the integration of Azure pipelines makes the end-to-end -end traceability, uh, makes the automation process uh, very, very easy and effective. <laughs>